Hello, in this video I'm going to do a quick review of biasing and uh, calculating the small signal parameters for a transistor circuit. Um, I'm going to write review of BJT biasing and small signal model. So let's say I wanted to um, design a biasing network uh, that is robust to beta variations for a BJT transistor. And let's imagine that I wanted to run this from a supply of 18 volts, and I wanted my transistor to be biased at a collector current of 2.5 milliamps. Step number one is I'm going to draw my biasing network. I'm going to choose a four resistor or voltage divider biasing network because it is robust to beta variations. So I'm going to draw my circuit first. Consists of a BJT transistor with resistors connected to both the collector and meter terminals, as well as a voltage divider connected at the base. RC, RE, R1 and R2. This is my VCC. Let's imagine I want to make it 18 volts. Um, and designing the biasing network will mean basically selecting the value for those resistors. I'm going to make an assumption uh, of a nominal beta of 100 for my transistor. Um, so let's get started. The step number one is I'm going to select a value for my collector current. So choose IC. And as I said, I'm going to make it 2.5 milliamps in this particular case. Uh, in order to set that, I'm going to now select resistor values. I'm going to start with RE. In order to have uh, good temperature stability uh, and good beta stability, I want my uh, voltage at the emitter to be at least one volt. And so that's what I'm going to uh, set it to. So set RE to make VE approximately equal to one volt. And RE by Ohm's law is the ratio of the voltage across the emitter resistor divided by the current. I'm going to approximate the emitter current to be equal to the collector current. And so this will be 1 volt divided by 2.5 milliamps or 400 ohms. Next, I'm going to uh, design my voltage divider network. So I'm going to select um, R1 and R2, and I want my transistor to be turned on. For that, I need to have 0.7 volts approximately um, across the base emitter junction. So if the emitter voltage is sitting at 1 volt, I will want my base voltage to be sitting at around 1.7 volts. So to set VV at 1.7 volts. Um, if I assume that R1 and R2 are forming a perfect voltage divider network, uh, meaning no current is going into the base of the VJT transistor, that's the approximation I am making, then I will have a perfect voltage divider, so the ratio of the resistors R1 to R2 will be also equal to the ratio of the voltage uh, drop across R1 um, and the voltage drop across R2. My overall voltage is um, 18 volts, my VCC, that's the delta between VCC and uh, in ground, and so I will want 1.7 volts to be dropped across R2 and the remaining voltage 18 minus 1.7 to drop across R1. And uh, that gives me 16.3 divided by 1.7. Now, one consideration um, is that I will want, in order for, for this voltage divider network to be a robust voltage divider network meaning for my approximation that there is negligible current going into the base of my transistor, I will need for my um, R2 resistor to be much smaller than the resistance looking into the base of that transistor. So I want R2 to be less than or equal to at least one-tenth of beta times the resistance connected to the emitter by the reflection rule when we looked into the base of a transistor the resistance that we see is beta times the resistance connected to the emitter. Uh, so this will be 10 times RE, which is 400, so this is 4 kilo ohms. 
So I could choose R2 to be um, smaller than or equal to 4 kilo ohms. I'm going to select 4 kilo ohms, and so that gives me. So choose R2 equals 4 kilo ohms, and then R1 is equal to 38 kilo ohms. All right. And finally, I'm going to select RC. And um, let's imagine that they want to center my collector voltage. Um, and that will be the case typically if I'm designing a circuit where my output is taken out of the collector. Uh, but in reality, RC can really be, um, or VC, can be any value that will keep the transistor out of saturation. So any value between 1.3 volts and VCC will be a valid value to set our VC. Um, so in this case, I'm going to try to center VC at VCC halves or 9 volts. Um, of course, the value VC is uh, equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across the RC resistor, which is IC times RC. And so I'll have 18 volts minus 2.5 milli uh, times RC. So I can solve for RC. Um, which will be equal to uh, VCC 18 minus VC, uh, which is 9, divided by 2.5 milli. Or 3.6 kilo ohms. And that's it. I have completed the design of my biasing network. If I wanted to uh, find my Q point, the Q point typically is given um, as two values, the value of the collector current, the quiescent collector current, and the collector to emitter voltage, so VCE. My IC, I have just calculated or chosen in reality to be 2 milliamps. And VCE, I can easily calculate. It's just VC minus VE. VC I have set to 9 volts, VE I have set to 1 volt, and so uh, voila, that will be my Q point. Alright, let's turn the, uh, the problem around. Uh, so this has been a design problem where we are given a circuit, or rather, uh, we are given uh, a set of specifications and we are asked to design a circuit with resistor values to meet those specifications. Uh, what happens if I'm if I'm trying to do the opposite? If I'm given a circuit, um, a biasing circuit with already resistor values and I were trying to uh, find out the Q point for that circuit, how will I go about it? And it's very similar, we'll just be, it's kind of the reverse process. Uh, but let's imagine I had the same circuit, so I'm going to call this the design part of the bias network. And now I'm going to uh, do an analysis problem. So let's imagine I am given uh, the same circuit for simplicity so we can compare. And I am told, here is your circuit. RC is 3.6 kilo ohms. RE is 400 ohms. R2 is 4 kilo ohms, and R1 is 38 kilo ohms. And I were told um, if beta is equal to 100, find the Q point for this circuit, which is again IC and VC. All right, and uh, this is how I will start. Uh, so first of all, I have a voltage divider network formed by R1 and R2. So my first step is going to uh, find the value of the base voltage VV, which is uh, by the voltage divider going to be equal to VCC times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, or 18 volts times 4K divided by 38K plus 4K. I do that calculation, I get 1.7 volts. So it will be 1.7 volts there. 
Uh, next, I'm going to make the assumption that my transistor is on, and so I'm going to find the value of my emitter voltage as VB minus 1.7 volts. Sorry, minus, uh, yeah, minus 0.7 volts, which is the voltage drop across the base emitter junction. And so 1.7 minus 0.7, that's equal to 1 volt. So VE is equal to 1 volt. Uh, next, with that information, I can now find the quiescent collector current, which I'm going to approximate as being equal to the emitter current. So find IC, uh, which is approximately equal to VE divided by RE, or 1 volt divided by 400 ohms, which gives me 2.5 milliamps. So I'm going to write that down as well. And with that information, I can now find VC, which is going to be VCC minus the voltage drop across the collector resistor. Or 18 minus 2.5 milli times 3.6K. And that will give me approximately 9 volts. And with this information, I can now find the Q point. My IC I have calculated to be 2.5 milliamps. And uh, VCE is going to be VC minus VE. Um, so 9 volts minus 1 volt or 8 volts. And not surprisingly, I got the same Q point as in the previous uh, example, because I was analyzing a circuit with the same parameters. All right, uh, one more thing that we could do with the circuit, uh, or that we could have been asked, is to find the small signal parameters for the circuit. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to draw the AC equivalent circuit. So my small signal AC equivalent circuit is as follows. I have an R1 resistor going to signal ground or AC ground because VCC is a DC source. I have R2 for kilo ohms also going to ground. And then I have the base of my transistor. I will have first R pi, which is the dynamic resistance from base to emitter, with a voltage drop of V pi across it. I have um, a current source, uh, which I, it's the way I am modeling, uh, from collector to emitter, a current source of value beta times IC, or equivalently GM times V pi. I have an emitter resistor connected to the emitter of that transistor, little r o, which is the output resistance of the transistor, and then I have r c connected to a signal ground, which is 3.6 kilo ohms. My transistor has been um, replaced by the hybrid pi model. which is inside this box, with this being the base terminal, collector terminal, emitter terminal. Let's go ahead and start finding the uh, small signal AC parameters. Um, we have little re, which is equal to the thermal voltage divided by the quiescent collector current, or, oops, or 25 millivolts. That's the value of the thermal voltage at room temperature divided by 2.5 milliamps, which is 10 ohms. Uh, R pi is beta times little re, and so in this case it will be 100 um, times 10, or 1 kilo ohm. We have GM, which is the transconductance, the small signal transconductance of the PJT transistor, and it's 1 over little re, so 1 over 10, 
or 0.1 and it has units of um, of conductance so amps divided by volts uh, sometimes they refer to them as MOS or however you want to call them so 0.1 amps per volt um, and finally little arrow which is the early voltage divided by the quiescent collector current um, I haven't uh, written a, down a value for the early voltage but let's assume that the early voltage was 150 volts and in that case I will have 150 volts divided by 2.5 milliamps which will yield 60 kilo ohms so that's it those will be my small signal uh, parameters for this circuit. Thank you.